Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar. My name is Heli Häyrynen and I'm the leader of the Green Step Academy and the host of this webinar. Over the past year, Green Step has grown into a multi-country international organization. Among all the other sectors, we also helping our customers with this uh, growth. And that is why we would like to organize today's webinar as well. Why this topic is now more important than ever? The answer is because Finland needs know-how and labor from abroad uh, more than ever. And today in this webinar, we will discuss best practices and lessons learned and experiences in building successful multicultural teams and organizations. Today, we are having long experienced professionals. Let me introduce you Green Steps Head of HR Services, Kati Tuovinen. Kati is responsible for Green Steps HR Services to our customers. She has over 15 years of experience in responsible and versatile HR and leadership roles and projects in Finnish and global growth companies. Kati has worked as many HR roles from consultant to a director. Kati is experienced change leader and facilitator and has specialized in building and developing culture, leadership development and change management. And then in this webinar, we want to offer you diverse perspectives on today's topic. And we are proud to get these experts and leaders of multicultural teams into our webinar. Warmly welcome to the webinar, Veronica Gordon. Veronica is an experienced human resources managers manager with the demonstrated history of working in international companies in Latin America and Europe. She is skilled in HR policies and processes and project management. Experience in HR shared services and working as an HR business partner. And the third guest in our webinar is Ram Kumar. Ram is a HR leader with the rich global HR experience combined with robust business management, people management, stakeholder management and change management. Experience in organizations like Nokia, Microsoft, Huhtamäki and Busware. Unfortunately, we have to wait around for a while because of the technical problems, but uh, hopefully he will join us uh, in live uh, through the chats as uh, soon as possible. But then we will start with you, Kati. Uh, one moment. <laughs> Today's agenda is full of interesting themes, but uh, what do you think about Kati? Uh, these most of the things what we are talk when we are talking about the recruitment uh, multicultural talent abroad, we are talking about the recruitment process. But uh, what to do before recruitment? What the companies or organizations should uh, have done or even think before they even start the recruitment process? Thank you, Heli. And good uh, afternoon, I guess. It's a bit after 12 to everybody. Yes, even if it's a recruitment anywhere, whether it's in Finland uh, or across the borders, it's always really crucial to start thinking a lot of things already ahead before actually initiating the recruitment. So it kind of, if we go really further back, it goes back to, for example, code of conduct, if we have it, what we actually stayed out there, what we think about having what kind of uh, processes uh, in anything we do, but especially then uh, thinking about that in recruitment. So whether we uh, look for and strive for uh, diverse teams. Uh, diversity can mean, of course, multicultural teams, but also it means a lot of other things as well. Uh, so starting from there, 
Then secondly, of course, we should know what we are looking for. So starting from our strategic competencies, what are the common competencies, what kind of competencies we actually need to, to build the growth and to reach the targets. Uh, it's easy to say, it's not so easy to implement. So that's probably one of the trickiest part in, in HR field, I would say, to identify actually the most crucial competencies. And then we of course need to add there as well the cultural part. So what's the cultural fit that everybody is looking for? I mean organizational culture here now. So meaning what kind of people, personalities we, we are looking for, what kind of competencies they need to have to fit into our culture, what kind of behaviors we, we value. So starting from that before we even create a profile. And then of course there can be also other factors influencing the the targets and, and how we start the recruitment, for example, uh, how, what kind of teams we already have, whether this is a new thing that we might have uh, different cultures in the team. So if that's the case, we need to pay more attention to, to leadership and the team uh, cooperation already beforehand. But of course, always the hiring manager needs to be involved. So thinking about the competencies, the team structure, uh, and the, the need for a new talent. And I could even go on and on with the other <laughs> angles, angles of this topic, uh, but perhaps I'll, I'll stop here and we can then continue with this discussion going forward. Thank you, thank you. No worries, I, I, I definitely understand that. We have talked about this with Veronica and Ram and you before, so I, I know that, that you have such long experience to do and helping, helping firms and organizations with these situations, so I, I know that it's not going to be easy to have a short answer. But then, before we go on, I would like to ask you what kind of companies strive to recruit from abroad? We, I know that we have listeners um, who have uh, from a little uh, uh, minor companies, a little bit smaller organizations, but then we also have uh, some people which are from a big organizations. Uh, but you have helped quite many, like, uh, uh, nearly 100 organizations with these situations. So do you have some kind of uh, certain type of organization or company who start to think about those things or what kind of situation they have? Well, I guess you could divide it to, to two. Those ones who actively think about it uh, already when they actually be a startup or, or then, of course, if you're an organization that is already international. So that is kind of taking for granted. Uh, but then there are other part would be that they accidentally end up in a situation or it's not accident, but it's, uh, it's end of, a, for example, a, a process where new investors, for example, join. So it might be that the investor is international or you, you get new board members uh, uh, who are international or they have been in many international companies. So there are kind of a, either you are actively looking for it. And then, of course, also then it's good to think not just the teams doing the job, also about all the teams in the company, meaning kind of leadership teams and, and partners and, and the board. So having, having the international experience uh, all over in that sense, not just building one team at a time, so to speak, but it's kind of in the kind of DNA of, of planning of becoming becoming a multicultural company. But of course, the obvious answer, I guess, would be that, well, we sell globally. We are a company that wants to provide services or, or products globally, whether, whether you do it yourself in a company or you have uh, suppliers or partner networks uh, internationally or globally. But that's kind of the one obvious answer to this. But then, of course, one thing might be that we just look for better, uh, better results with more diverse teams. So there don't necessarily need to be a link to money in that sense right away that we think about like customers. But of course, in the end, the better we are in employee experience and having more diverse teams, we have a better talent uh, combination, the better we are, I'm sure, with the customers and customer experience as well. Thank you, Kathy. And then 
I would like to ask you, Veronica, because you have a HR experience and you are professional in that area. But in this webinar, we would like to tell a little bit more than that from you, because you have the experience uh, from the other side too. Could you tell us about your story? Yes. Thank you for, for having me, by the way. Um, yeah, so um, my journey to Finland started a long time ago. It started already in 2008, actually. Uh, I was at the time working for Nokia in Argentina, so I'm from Argentina, um, and I was offered to come to Finland for a three month uh, short uh, short term international transfer. That was the name at the time. So I came here from April to June. So it was spring in Helsinki and everything was beautiful and I really loved that the experience. It was really good, but it also gave me the a different perspective because I was coming from a sales office. So the rhythm of a sales office compared to the rhythm of headquarters is extremely different. So the added value that I could bring also to the team I was working here at headquarters was like from global things look really easy. But then when you implement in a country, there's a lot of differences, there's cultural differences, there's legal differences, there's rhythm of the business that is a bit different. So actually that was a very good uh, interaction that we had at the time, so I could bring the local flavor to the global flavor. And then when I came back to the office, I brought the global flavor to the local flavor. So it was a really good actually uh, learning experience from that perspective. But then end of 2010, I got I was back in Argentina and I got offered a position in Finland. Actually, it was not Finland at the beginning, it could have been either London, Copenhagen or Helsinki. I could choose between the three, three cities, which one would I like to move? And I decided to move to Finland. Oh, uh, we really have to ask you why. <laughs> yeah, so there, there were there were several factors. First of all, it's different to be, as I said, in a local office than to be in headquarters. So headquarters was much more tempting for me. But it was not only that, it was also a country where I felt safe. Uh, I had much more freedom to do things that I had in Argentina. I didn't know how London would be like. I didn't know how Copenhagen would be like. I had been in Finland, so I knew what to get in a way. And actually that was for me the, I, I would say that safety that is taken sometimes for granted. When I started talking to people, why did you, when I say I'm from Argentina, why did you come to Finland? Like you are have such a nice weather and the wine and the country, all those things that, yeah, but we are not safe. I, I cannot walk safely in my country. So in that sense, for me, that was actually one of the key factors why I, I decided to move to Helsinki. Besides the job and the, of course, career growth and development and, and all the opportunities that came after I moved to Finland, um, which were really the goal actually to move to Finland to broaden my experience and, and develop my career. And that was actually the outcome as well. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, and and ho hopefully we have one thing in common. We have tango, both of yes. us. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's also the, the other question. Oh, you're from Argentina. Do you dance tango? Yeah. And I have yeah. to say that, no, this is not something we are born with. It actually, there's not many of us that dance tango. Yes. So do you do you think that uh, uh, for a firm uh, who is uh, start thinking about the multiculturalism and, and making that kind of like international move, uh, is it uh, more important to get to know the possibilities what they can offer for the job seeker or expat, or should they should they uh, remember the, all the other factors? You said that you have been in Finland before, so you yeah. knew something a little bit more than the other ones. But in the first time, mm -hmm. when when you first time came to Finland, uh, did you have any any uh, that kind of like uh, surprises or something like that? What you what what you didn't expect or couldn't guess that would happen or I think that from a country perspective, I I didn't know what to expect. Like I I have a, an anecdote that it's it's quite pathetic actually because I went to the supermarket by myself because I thought I can buy anything, and then I of course I don't speak I don't speak Finnish I don't speak Swedish everything is in Finnish and Swedish in the products, and I thought I had bought uh, skim milk and I actually bought this Pima. Oh no skim milk is green so I thought if I get the green I will get that and that was like okay I think I need to get some help so I actually I think you need to have some support from colleagues support from a company like at least for me Finland relocation services supported me in everything in all the step of the way 
to get all the you know all the paperwork done, tax registrations, all the bank account and all these things that take time. And you don't think about that when you move. You think that everything is kind of I, I, I didn't even think of that, honestly, when I moved. And then, of course, having a colleague taking me to the supermarket was extremely helpful because you, you don't understand that it's so different. It's little things that actually uh, that really helped me. And I would say that a support a supporting colleague is very useful and then uh, a supporting company to arrange everything for you. It's easier than to 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 kind of settle in because at the beginning you have all this adrenaline of a new country, new city, new everything, and then you 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 might lose some perspective. So it's good to have somebody to guide you on how to do things. Thank you, Kati. Could you could you tell us uh, from your perspective how little bit smaller organizations handle these situations? Because somehow I got the feeling that smaller organizations don't have that kind of like big HR HR teams who could help. So do they have some other tools or how how they have they have tackled all these all these situations? Uh, put the mic on, please. No worries. Sorry. Uh, so I was just saying that you couldn't hear uh, that there are different ways of doing it, of course, in different companies. But I guess the best practice might be that we, again, as I said, I could have continued the list what you should do before the recruitment. So already before you actually uh, go for it, you should think about also the relocation. So whether you, how much you pay for it and, and whether you use a partner, usually partner is a good idea to, to to help your own workload. And and also there is a good best practices, for example, building some, whether it's a PowerPoint or some other format, but some info about Finnish culture and what, to, what you need to actually do and then sharing some uh, important links already during also the recruitment process because some people may not have been in Finland before. Of course, the candidates are different, but already to to get them more familiar with Finnish culture and society and ways of working, not just the company, but also the Finnish way, because most of the companies in Finland still, they still have the flavor of a Finnish culture as well, because there is a lot of things working there. So the culture is built on that. So I would say it's already it's about uh, packages of information and embedding uh, the relocation and the Finnish way of doing things already in the recruitment process. But then there is, of course, the induction part when the person actually comes. <laughs> then, of course, like Veronica, or Veronica already said about few good tips. So uh, in, in HR language, we often talk we have a mentor or a tutor for a new person in the company. So this should be then elaborated to be a bit further. So supporting also some free time activities, not just being a tutor or mentor to to get to know the company, but also about the Finnish practicalities. Then one good way I've learned in one uh, or few actually few uh, smaller companies. Uh, when I say smaller, I talk about like 50 people employing 50 people uh, or or less. So there has been a practice that either the team leader uh, and the team takes the new person if there's one newcomer uh, from abroad uh, for a dinner or or something else together. And then there is one company where also the the CEO took every month or every quarter all the new joiners from other co countries for a dinner. So so kind of these kind of recreational or after work things. I understand that during Corona this is even. Uh, more difficult sometimes to, to support the people if they are actually re relocating. But but these kind of events uh, help and those were really successful and people are really happy with them. So you could these you could plan ahead again. So already schedule F and think who does and what and then ensure that that happens when the person comes. Thank you, Kati. And what about Veronica? Uh, these all these tips might sound quite familiar with you. Uh, what are those things what you would do a little bit differently if if you would start all over again? <laughs> uh, I think that um, 
one thing that is is crucial is this understanding of of different and this this might might sound a bit boring but it's it's actually very key is understanding the legal conditions of your working environment in the country you are uh, because we have different conditions in different countries for me when i came here I had no clue about taxes or what to expect about the taxes. I just went to a tax office, got my tax card, and then I started getting surprises in my salaries. Because when you move to the, to the country, then there are certain things that are taxable for the employees, some are taxable for the company. So there, there's that type of um, information for me was missing. It's not that I would have said yes or no based on that, but it's good to know what to expect. Because sometimes that's, I think the first salary or pay slip that you see is probably the first shocker. Uh, that at least I had um, and it would have been much easier for me to 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 relax a bit with this topic if I had known what to expect, which for me was missing. Uh, but then I have to say, as I said before, I think that when you have a, a company helping you with all the all the other practicalities, that is already a very good thing. And I, I would do it all over again with the same company because they were really good. But then also one thing that I would have had like to have, which is something that we do actually in my current job, is that we have this buddy so it's not a mentor, it's not a tutor, it's a buddy. So it's somebody from another department that kind of embeds you into the working culture of, of the company, but at the same time, tips and tricks of what to do. So we, we try to, for example, if we have some, we have a lot of expats in our in our bank, so um, we try to, if it's an expat, to some other expat to give tips and tricks and from another department. So it's a bit broader and it's not the same group of people always talking to the same person. So we try, I think that that model is something that I would have really liked to have because I, I think when you're new in a country that you, you have no clue where to go to even, okay, what is the best place for a coffee? Because even though you can get a package with all the links and and best places to go, it's different when somebody has already done it and can give you tips and tricks which is really helpful to settle in a city. Right. Yep. And all those that kind of like everyday, everyday uh, tricks and, and, and everyday um, help is, is what is needed in the beginning. I can just imagine. Yes. OK, uh, well, I would like to I would like to uh, get a little bit uh, back to um, that question that uh, companies in a certain situation that they are they are starting to think about to get uh, knowledge, know-how abroad. They uh, need uh, more diverse uh, persons in their in their organizations. But uh, what are those things when when you look at the from the job seekers side? Uh, how they would know that this job is is for me or how would they what we could do better as an organization as a Finnish firm to get those talents into our company what the job seekers see and uh, what kind of things we should tell them beforehand uh, for example marketing our company or doing those recruitment announcements Kati, could you start? And and I would like to hear hear about your side, Veronica, too. Yes, thank you, Heli. Happy to start. And and before I answer your question, just briefly mention that that we we have actually Ram online, but he is not able to get the audio. So we might want to ask a few questions from him so that he could answer to the, the chat, and I could then answer on behalf of him. So let's try that for a few times so that we get also ram to you. Uh, but to come back to that question that what we could do better as a company to attract talent. Mm, of course, uh, it's not just a company issue. It's about the brand of fin Finland. So how, how Finland is seen uh, abroad. Uh, but of course, it comes back to the topic we studied. So about the culture and the employer brand would be possibly the term that many would use that how we we tell about our company, but these days not only web pages are the thing to be uh, in shape. So of course on web pages are really a good way of uh, attracting uh, international uh, multicultural talent would be of course to have some employee testimonials or stories about what it is to like, uh, what it is to work in this company in Finland. So it's, it's not just the voice of HR or the management, it's voice of the employees. But then, of course, uh, social media uh, is something LinkedIn is really, really a, a, 
a common uh, a tool that is used in these kind of uh, recruitment. And of course, not just even with the traditional way. So meaning that sometimes companies don't even need to open the position. Sometimes they get it through networks. So employees networks or, uh, or just LinkedIn networks. Uh, so that is also something. But if you write a job profile and if you look from the more traditional way that you post the job profile, it's really important to uh, pinpoint things that, that uh, are easily attachable for the brain people as well. For example, in Finland, if you need to know Finnish, then of course it's not for a non Finn. Uh, most likely. Of course, I know that there are people that have learned the language, but if you look for the talent, uh, not in Finland, it might be that there are not that many people having that language skill. So that is something that even the ad is in English and the company language might be English, but then if the job actually requires Finnish, that would be really important to also explain, not to just have a one bullet point, fluent Finnish and English. And if the profile doesn't explain it, it's really it's not nice because if you see that, oh, well, I could do the job, but I don't know this language. So there are other, other things as well in the job profile that you could pinpoint that, of course, you want to highlight the fact that you are looking for uh, international experience and, 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 and talent in a certain competence area. And then, of course, telling about the culture, not to have a really, really long list of demand, uh, demand kind of a thing, rather having a long list of telling about the companies, like selling, selling the position rather than telling what is required. Thank you. Before I ask uh, the same question from you, Veronica, uh, I would like to publish uh, Ram's uh, experience and, uh, and Ram's uh, uh, answers. Uh, and actually Ram tells us that Veronica was his but Buddy when, when he moved to Finland and, and Veronica was the one who gave Ram tips and tricks when, when Ram decided to uh, move to Finland and, and uh, started work here. So that's quite an quite, uh, interesting situation that, and it's, it's uh, wonderful to hear, Veronica, that you have uh, an opportunity to see how it works in your new workplace also and you probably the best one to get them tips, those new buddies, how, how it works, because you have done it already uh, by yourself. But then, um, then uh, Ram says about the uh, uh, he stories, and I'm sorry, I can't see those quest uh, answers right now. Could you help me, Kati, if you see those? Well, actually, I saw it earlier, so I, I can tell you that. So, so Ram responded that there were two reasons why he, he actually moved to Finland after a job. So the job and experience uh, was one of the main things. But the other one was uh, work-life balance and the way we do that in Finland, because his experience was, was from Singapore and India where he didn't feel that it was that much uh, emphasized in the same way what we do here in Finland. Yes. Can I, can I ask you, Veronica, about that? Uh, do we have a different culture from your point of view in a working life? Do we have a different kind of balance between <laughs> work and the other oh, yes. life? Oh, yes. I think that in Finland you're much more conscious about the well-being aspect of the work-life balance. Um, I When I moved here, I was a bit, um, first of all, the time the time schedules you have are much more stricter in a way that when you start working, you start working, you stop for lunch, 30 minutes, you continue and you finish. It, it's very straightforward. Where I came from, I went to the office at nine, but I would probably start working around 10 because it was one hour of socializing, saying hellos, having coffees, uh, much more chit chatting. Then you start working, then you have lunch after one at least. So, and so the days are longer. So it was never before six o'clock that I would leave the office. So the rhythm is different. And actually that is something that I, I actually value so much, especially when you have young children, it's extremely helpful. And now with remote work and everything, you have much, even more, much more possibilities to, to kind of balance that, that aspect of, of, of work. 
definitely. But I would like to, to comment a bit on the on the previous question about the, um, how to attract people to Finland, because I'm working at the Nordic Investment Bank at the moment. I'm an HR business partner here. Um, so the Nordic Investment Bank is um, an international financial institution uh, owned by the Nordic and Baltic countries, but it was decided that headquarters would be in Helsinki. So we are all based in Helsinki in the same building. It's not that we have offices around the eight countries, member countries. So one thing that we have done, uh, we did it end of 2019 before Corona <laughs> came. We did an, a new employer branding video and what we wanted to highlight there, we wanted to highlight the aspect of working for NIB because NIB has a very good mandate, but at the same time we wanted to, to tell our candidates what it is to be in Helsinki. So we actually had a bit of a mix. So it's not only about come to NIB, it's come to Helsinki, feel Helsinki. So we tried, we really want to encourage people to come to Helsinki because this is our our headquarters. So we are putting a lot of efforts in that. Uh, and then in our recruitment ads, we always mention that we we are happy to relocate employees from abroad, member countries or non-member countries. So in a way, we really want talent. We, will, we are looking for the talent and we want the talent to come to Helsinki. So we actually encourage that very much in all our ads. Thank you, Veronica. Can I can I continue with that with that talent finding? Because I think yeah. um, most of the organizations they are keen to have this secret sauce at how to find talent. How what are those uh, best practices of uh, how how to do 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 you have to nowadays you can't even have that kind of like uh, happenings or yeah or forums where to meet people. So what do you think? Uh, what what the organization should do or where they should go. Uh, Kati gave us hints about the LinkedIn and, and so on, but yeah. do you have some other other tips or what's your Defin opinion? Yeah, definitely LinkedIn is much more powerful than we think because everybody goes to LinkedIn for, to find a job. So we actually have our own LinkedIn page where we, we post our positions and that's actually probably the, the best channel, but then we also publish in uh, in our member countries um, websites for job seekers. So we publish there as well. And then one thing that I, I think I, I'm really proud of is the network because even of course we publish all our positions are published externally and then there's many like somebody shares that somebody shares that somebody shares and that actually brings us a lot of candidates as well. I don't think we need to underestimate the power of the network. I think the networking is is very, very powerful, more than we think. Thank you. What about Kati? Kati, do you have any any other? Where 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 should uh, organizations go? Do they do they have some other other secret forums than LinkedIn? Well, that might be more about de depending on the industry they are working in. So there are different kind of job boards, international job boards in Finland. That would be I guess we don't have that much uh, based on industry, but we have that kind of forums depending on also the job you're actually doing. So that's also international, meaning that, for example, aviation has own ways of finding their candidates in addition to LinkedIn. Or, or then if we think about the IT sector, which is the trickiest, I guess, to find the, the key talent at the moment. So they have own, own a different kind of forums where they share uh, with among the candidates, I would say. So then you would need to know how to reach them through some other channels. But many companies use, job, use international job boards, like in Finland, meaning job board might be a Tunitori or Oikotie or these kind of job boards. So there are in industry-based ones, or then there are just uh, in, a, in a country, there might be some, some job boards you might want to be alive. But not just posting a job in LinkedIn, just to make sure, like, I mean, also that employees would post that, okay, we are looking for new people or uh, other people also around the people. So the networks would share that, okay, this, this firm is looking for it. For example, in HR, there is a forum in Facebook, actually, also that people share tips and tricks uh, there uh, among each other, like HR things. But then, of, of course, there are also sometimes we have a, we have posts that we link all the open positions. So these you can find in other areas of competencies, not just HR, and then depending on, on the industry of the company. 
Thank you. Then I would like to ask about uh, about the job seekers point of view. Uh, Ram and Veronica, what do you think about Finnish way to uh, make announcement uh, for uh, free uh, jobs? Because I, I, I've heard that uh, Finland is kind of uh, closed in a way that uh, applications might be hard to hard to fill in that way or or some people who have a very good uh, education and very good experience it might be hard to get get you into the interviews or do you have any any tips or any practical ideas or best practices for those people who who are seeking job in Finland who would like to who who doesn't for example, who have come abroad um, to Finland, but who doesn't have a job right now, what what could be the best way to uh, get you inside all those networks and 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 happenings? What you need to do to get a job in in Finland, even if you are not a uh, Finnish speaking mm. person? I think there's two sides to this because uh, I can tell you from previous experience when I was looking for a job in Finland and uh, was it like three or four years ago already, uh, it's really hard when you don't speak Finnish to find a job. Uh, even though in many ads they write it in English and they say it's okay, at the end of the day sometimes it's not that okay. Um, so that part is a bit misleading sometimes I would say so but one thing that I, I, I learned or, or one thing I did is that I started contacting if there's a name in the ad I usually contact the person and I ask like do you think that is Finnish really really required or is because sometimes maybe there are standard job descriptions and then you know they publish and actually for the job it's not necessarily needed they need more the knowledge than the, the language in a way. So actually that for me actually worked quite nicely. And then in a way you are kind of building a network when you contact these people and you kind of become more visible. So for me that was one of the of the things that uh, that helped a bit. And then of course uh, keep your contacts and your network very much alive because that helps us a lot. Because actually from from contacting my contacts or my network actually I, I ended up finding jobs much easier. Thank you. Ram says uh, that I have recruited a lot of resources in Finland from Asia. My selling point for potential talent has been one work life balance two, amazing social benefits, uh, especially for talent with families and three safety and security. And what do you think about those, Veronica? I fully agree. <laughs> For me, the, the, the safety aspect is something that uh, it will never, I, I will never stop being amazed about it. Uh, and then it's true about the the social, the social part of or or the public health or the public transportation. Because for me, public in Argentina, public doesn't mean that it works. So for me, that was also a mindset change that actually public health actually works very well here. Public transportation is extremely good. So I think you also have to kind of break a bit of the paradigm and, and start thinking in new ways. Uh, so that was also actually for me a very nice surprise. And then of course the work-life balance is something that I, compared to some other countries rhythm, it's it has no price, it's priceless. So yes, definitely. Thank you. And Ram continues, I would say that there are a lot of job forums. Helsinki Business Hub has organized few forums for the new job seekers, so candidates should make use of such forums to find potential opportunities. And that's that's also the, the one thing what we definitely all agree. What about Kati? Uh, what about the organizations? Do they understand? Do they use this uh, security card? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, most likely security comes not comes it, it it doesn't come to the question uh, uh, to the discussions from perhaps from the employer it comes through the discussion with the candidate then uh, but then if I think about the answers so far what Veronica and Ran told that's also good for employers to actually understand that there is this kind of uh, for example the the business helping business hub 
So, of course, the companies could also advertise their jobs in different kind of forums if they would know about it. So, kind of matching this candidate perspective and, and the company perspective. So, that is, that is really important. But I know that there is, in Finland, um, there is this language barrier. I must say even a barrier or what well, would, would be the better word. Uh, because, uh, and it's also about mindset thing, I guess. So if the companies are kind of built on different cultures and different languages from the very beginning, it's kind of part of the DNA and it's not an issue. But then if it, 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 it hasn't been that and you try to make the change that we become more multicultural, the, the trickiest part will be the language, I guess. So kind of then you would need to have a lot of company languages because not everybody necessarily speaks English. So you can't choose English because then they the, the, the people you have already wouldn't understand. So kind of it, it has a lot of different aspects, even though it's ju just the language, but the language has a tight link to the cultural things in Finland. I don't know if Veronica and Ram has other points, like in addition to language, but I, I think that it always comes back to language in many yes. things, in HR, in recruitment, in, in, in the team leading even. So. And I think, I think it's also very much linked to the diversity and inclusion strategy that the company has mm -hmm. because one goes hand in hand with the other one so in a way if you have a strong diversity and inclusion strategy where you want to have different perspectives it's easier but then if that if that is still work in progress then it will take a bit longer but i think that it, it i can see that there's a kind of a shift at the moment that there there's more people becoming more aware of this so that's actually quite good to see Yes, I trust that as well. I think I can see it in the small and medium sized companies. So the mindset is a bit different than uh, than in some companies that are not international yet. So really Finnish based. And of course, in, in Finland, it, it it is understandable. We are not a bilingual com uh, country with Finnish and English. So kind of not everybody speaks English, even though we have a good level of uh, uh, language skills in Finland. But it doesn't mean that everybody can't speak English. Of course, then we can support the people so, so to learn English. And then, of course, I've noticed that most of the companies who have a lot of uh, foreign people working from them, different cultures, they actually arrange Finnish culture uh, lessons or even language lessons as well. Yes. So they arrange some, some of these kind of training, not just the pure kind of, if we think about competence management and training, we often not think about necessarily language training or culture yes. training, but that's also something that the multicultural companies do. Actually, now that you mentioned this, we when we bring expats with families or, or expats alone, we offer also Finnish language support for the family or for the person. So yeah, or for both, of course. But but I think that that's also key to, to help them blend into the into the culture and understand. So. I think actually that that would be something else to add that you you need it, it's much easier when you get support uh, language support. Thank you. Uh, Ram also also commented that uh, he agree you reach out the network. This is for the little bit earlier quest, uh, conversation. Connect with people via LinkedIn and have a virtual coffee with them just to explore. Exp opportunities and I think that also that kind of like language path uh, as we used to say uh, might be one one that kind of way to explore opportunities. Uh, what about Ram and Veronica? Uh, we really would like to here in Finland we really would like to have that kind of like diverse and mul multicultural organizations but what does it mean if it doesn't mean just the language and it doesn't mean just that you have one or two persons from abroad what kind of benefits firms would get if they think about uh, diversity and multiculturalism a little bit wider than they used to what are those things what they would would uh, reach or would benefit I think the most important addition is different perspectives because you have different backgrounds, different knowledge, different experiences, and that already enriches much more either the customer experience, employee experience, whatever experience you're you're aiming for. Because I think that that is, um, if you want to go global and go international, you have to have people from different 
backgrounds, different cultures, different nationalities. It's not only that, OK, one or two will make it. You have to and you have to have a mindset change or you have to be ready for that because it doesn't work like overnight. Yes, now we are. It's a process. It's change. There's a lot of us as we were talking about this diversity and inclusion. For me, diversity and inclusion strategy should go hand in hand with this expansion or internationalization in a way that you need to understand that it's a much broader a topic than just having a couple of people from abroad. There's a lot of change management. You need to work on cultural management. Um, there's a lot of things to consider, but I think they're totally worthwhile. It's a very good investment. Definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting if Fran has something to say about that, but what do you think about Kati? Do we have enough uh, know-how or knowledge how uh, what uh, that diversity actually means in organizations? Well, um, I must say that yes and no, I guess. So I, I think it's, it's like with any other topic as well. It's about the realizing and actually understanding what it means. So it, it starts from it starts from the culture, and now I'm talking about organizational culture. So it, it means that even if we be in a Finnish company, most likely most more people are Finnish, and we have a certain culture, and we even may have defined values for our organizational culture. When we get new people in, whether it's a Finn or not, uh, you would you should do this. But of course, when you have other uh, cultures coming in uh, and people from abroad, then it's really necessarily that you actually start to talk about the thing again. So if our, tr for example, trust is one value and if what it means for Finns, uh, it might be universal and mean the same for people coming wherever, but actually we would actually need to talk about it, what it means and what the behaviors are. So I think this is something that every company should do, whether they have Finns or any other cultures or and diversity is, is a broader <laughs> term than just thinking about different cultures, of course, it means a lot of different things, different ages, uh, gender uh, and, and so forth. So, of course, it means that we have an open uh, communication, but I would say in addition to language, it will have a huge impact on uh, common practices, the, the way we communicate, the way we lead people. So kind of even just like the way we uh, uh, behave or the way we do actually act in the meetings or like Veronica you gave a good uh, flavor of your uh, uh, experience in Argentina for example like that one hour first we just socialized uh, maybe in Finland that wouldn't happen even if we tried it I don't know so kind of if we would say that okay now from nine to ten we just do this so it's like it's everyday things so like it's little things in this as well and you shouldn't take two big steps first, you should start to think it from step by step approach. But you would need to rethink uh, your ways of working if if you want to become more more multicultural than you are now. Thank you. And Ram says that a lot of new startup companies want their workforce very diverse and that's in their DNA and and for attracting uh, one way of uh, attracting new talent, but still there are some medium large companies uh, where they emphasize on Finnish language, especially in sales and HR roles. And that's that's I I, I see the see the situation too that we we are very happy to talk that we are multicultural and we are diverse, but actually we don't think about that so wide uh, as as it as as we should and. Uh, it um, actually a few weeks ago we had a seminar where where we were talking about the fund funds and 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 what kind of people and talent funds need in the future. And uh, one of our guests said that actually it is quite common that in in big uh, investment uh, funds and and organizations they have a uh, persons and staff who has a very very diverse background. They might be people who have studied history or, or social science or that kind of topics and, and areas which are not very common in in investment uh, side or in funds normally. But uh, it just uh, tells you that uh, world it changes and, and as Veronica said that if we want to understand our customers, we have to have diverse 
perspectives and diverse uh, uh, different kind of point of view and understand different kind of backgrounds and understand and uh, different kind of uh, uh, way of life and and values and and so on. So that is very important and it is it is not just that you hire one or two persons abroad. Um, actually, I would I would like to ask you. You Kati, tell, uh, told us about the uh, those companies who are who are working with the technical area and a startup with the with the for example game industry. And uh, I was wondering. Uh, sometimes uh, I heard that they are just uh, looking for a talent abroad, but is it though that they are not uh, looking for diverse talents? They are just looking for talents. How how it goes? <laughs> well, again, I couldn't kind of say that every company is the same. So, but I guess in many cases you don't actually pay too much attention, and you should, like we started. Uh, before you actually start looking for something. It's really common for us to, to if, if Matt leaves, we try to find another Matt, you know, kind of, we, we don't try to understand what are actually the competencies we are looking for and, and what were the competencies we, we lost when Matt left, but like, do we need exactly the same or are we looking for something else? Uh, so I think it comes back to the, to the beginning of this webinar in that sense that we would need to dig a bit deeper about what, what we mean by multicultural talent, what we mean by cultural fit to the organization. So having it a bit more detailed, explained for us, and, and then of course for the candidates as well. And one point uh, which is uh, important to also think uh, is that we started also, like I said, that if you have a code of conduct, and now Veronica brought, brought also this, uh, if we have a diversity or inclusive strategy, we should think about how, how the recruitment fits in here. So what it actually means in practice. And I want to bring up a, a, one additional point here is that if you look at around the world, the more the sustainability things are growing, uh, it is all the time growing. And we have a, a lot more requirements also. For example, in, in also in like you mentioned, Helen, about if investors or funds or, or reporting finance deals, we have a lot, lot new, uh, a big new world ahead uh, thinking about how we actually uh, report our sustainability actions. And there is one part which is social responsibility, which links directly to a lot of things in HR. So kind of also thinking about the, the reporting side, not just because of uh, investors and, and, and brand, but of course, from the candidate perspective, because also the young new, younger people than, than I am, or, or kind of we talk about Y generation or even younger, they are putting a lot more effort to finding out what the companies actually do for environment and how they do the sustainability things, what they report. So that is also one aspect of uh, ensuring that we attract enough uh, talent and the talent we want to. And of course, there is a lot of other good, uh, good things that happens if we pay more attention to these, these sustainability uh, perspectives. Thank you. Uh, in the end of this webinar, I would like to have your final statement. And you could choose, uh, would you like to have your final st uh, statement for, for the organizational side or for those people who are looking for a job in, in Finland? or new opportunity. So uh, what it would be, what we should keep in mind to build successful multicultural team or be uh, uh, or join into the multicultural team. What is the most important thing what we need to keep in mind? This is also for you, Ram. <laughs> it's not so easy to write everything down, but but OK, we could we could start with you, Kati. If you are ready. Yes, well, it's always a tricky to do it in a nutshell in that sense that this is a really broad topic. Uh, but if I would need to, in addition to all the topics we've discussed, I would say it should start from defining why we are doing it and defining actually what, what it means to be, what it means for us, why we want to be multicultural. 
uh, and I think good answer is not just because we because everybody else is doing this. So we would need to understand why why we need this, why it is important to us. That would be my statement. Thank you, Kathy. And then Veronica. Yeah, purpose is definitely needed for this. But I would I would say that for organizations, this is a journey that is very much worth taking or starting. So I would encourage this to happen. And then for candidates, I would say that keep your keep your hopes up, like don't give up <laughs> because change is coming. Yeah. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, if Ram, if you are still there, uh, I can I can share your opinions too. But uh, at this point, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank all the attendees. You will get this uh, webinar uh, afterwards. Uh, the link to that, and you can you can listen to that again. But it was really really inspiring to. Uh, get you here and share some ideas how to how to build successful multicultural teams and organizations and why the diverse is is very important in our organizations. Thank you so much, Veronica. Thank you so much, Fram, and thank you, Kati. And have a lovely week. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>